Hello there, today I'll be showing how to perform an FRP bypass on a ZTE Blade D that was sold by Optus uh, about a year ago or so. The FRP bypasses on the exact same phone, but the international versions use a very easy method to bypass the FRP. Uh, that method does not work on this specific unit. The method that I'm going to show is quite lengthy, uh, but I'll provide each step and be as informative as possible. I'm showing this for educational purposes only, and I don't wish for this video to be used for a stolen phone or anything like that. I don't want to condone any actions like that. There are a few things we need to do before we start anything. Uh, you will need an SD card, any size, doesn't matter, 5, 12 meg, 1 gig, 2 gig, whatever. Uh, and you will need two applications from the link provided in the description. They are from Root Junkie in his downloads. Here's a picture of both files that you will need to download. These two here. Download them to your PC and put them on the root directory of your SD card, so just drag and drop the files onto your SD card. Uh, now you insert the SD card into the phone and we can now begin. Power on the phone with the SD card inserted with both applications that we put on there previously. Wait till it boots up to the setup screen. Tap on the arrow and press skip. It will bring you to the Wi-Fi setup, but this little window pops up if you don't have a SIM card in. Uh, if you do have one in, that shouldn't come up, but tap the window to make it go away. Now connect to your Wi-Fi network and let it go through to where it shows that the reset protection is in place. I have sped up this part so you don't have to sit here for two minutes while it takes its time. Once you see that the FRP protection is in place, you need to press back a few times to get back to the Wi-Fi settings. Make sure you are still connected to your Wi-Fi network at this stage as this is very important later on. Now scroll down and go to add another network. You now need to hold the comma key on the keyboard, slide your finger up to the gear icon and let go to bring up a new window. You will need to select Android keyboard settings. Then select text correction. Go to personal dictionary. Select English, tap on the little plus sign and add a word, just type anything and then press back. Tap on the magnifying glass and type in the letter V, which will bring up a few options. You want to go to voice input settings, select text to speech output, press the little gear icon, go to install voice data. You need to now press the three dots at the top right corner of the screen. Tap on open source licenses. You need to tap and hold down on any word in the window to then bring up the access bar. You need to click on the share icon shown here. And now select email. Now you have to set up an email. However, it cannot be a Google one. I'm using my old Hotmail account, but Yahoo or something like that will work. Type in your email and press next. Type in your password and press next. It will validate the settings. This shouldn't take too long. Make sure you are still connected to Wi-Fi or this part will not work. Now this part is optional, but change the sync option to never and untick all of the little boxes and tap next. It will show your email address. Tap next again. Now it will say waiting for sync. Just press the back key on the phone. And now you'll be back to the open source licenses page. Tap on any word again until the access bar appears and select the share icon. Choose email again and now you should be at your compose screen. Press back at the top left to then go to your inbox. At the top left of the screen, there are three lines. Select these to bring up a side window. Scroll down until you find where it says settings and tap that. It will bring up settings, it will show your email address, select that. Scroll down and select remove account and then select continue. You will now be in the phone settings. Scroll down to security. You are now required to set a pin or patent for the lock screen. Now select lock screen shortcuts. Tap the left one, which by default is the shortcut to the phone dialer. It will bring up a list of different shortcuts, but we want to select applications. But we want to select apps. Scroll down and find file manager and select that. This will now be set as the left shortcut on the lock screen of the phone. 
lock the phone again and unlock it. At the left side will be the file manager icon. Tap on it and drag it across the right of the screen. You will be prompted to enter your pin or pattern. Do so and the file manager application will appear. Select the three lines at the top left side of the screen. This brings up a little window. Select SD card. Now select apps at the bottom. This will now display all of the APK or application files on the SD card. You need to find the application called Android 5 Google Account Manager. Select this and the security window will pop up. Tap settings, scroll down to where it says unknown sources. Drag the little slider across to allow access to install applications. Press back and select the Android 5 Google Account Manager again. Tap install, then it will show another window. Select let the system decide. This will start installing the application. If this window pops up, accept it and wait for it to finish. Once it's finished, tap done, and now we move on to the second application we need to install. Select the application called com.rootjunkie.frpbypass.apk and tap install. Let that finish and then select open. you need to press the right soft key on the phone to bring up a small window which says browser sign in. Select that, press OK, and now you can put in your actual Google account details. Do so and sign in. Let that sign you into the phone and it will bring you back to your list of applications once done. Now go ahead and reboot the phone. Let the phone reboot as normal. However, it will bring up the lock screen, this time instead of setup. Input your pin or pattern and enter it. Now setup will appear. Press the arrow, select skip. It will now check your connection, which may take some time. Now it will say account added, tap on next. Basically at this point, go through the setup as you would on a brand new device. And that's it, you have bypassed the FRP lock on this phone. As I said, this will work for the Optus branded ZTE Blade D, but this may work for other Optus ZTE phones running Android 5. Anyways, I hope this tutorial has been useful, and as mentioned previously, this is meant for educational purposes only. Thank you for watching and let me know if this worked for you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Comment below if you would like to see more content like this. We'll see you in the next one.